everywhere I've ever been to customs, I have been completely and utterly fucked with. Really? It's horrific. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've come through the Denver airport and had shit stolen from me uh, by airport security. Just It's just stuff where it's like, no, I know this is legal to go through. And they're like, eh, we're going to take it. I get selected uh, in the United States, mind you, for um, a lot of so-called random screenings. Because uh, oh, yeah. I often have a beard. Um, I, am, I have a last name they cannot pronounce. So I get I get picked a, an awful lot. Um, What's your favorite mispronunciation? Casabian? I feel like that's the way to go. Um, Casabian's probably the most common. Really? Uh, and yeah, everybody um, C.S. Lewin's fans. C.S. I Lewis guess. Uh, and like, what's honestly quite funny to me is like my family uh, pronounces my name wrong. Like Casabian is not the proper pronunciation, sure. but it's like in English that's how a K is pronounced. Right. Uh, but in Armenian, it'd be pronounced Kasabian. <laughs> sure, sure. But like, I guess I'm introducing myself to people in Armenia. Like, no, 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 it's not your name. I'm like, please <laughs> tell me more. What are you? What are you? Well, you're never gonna win. It nah. always reminds me of uh, Kyle Kinane's bit about uh, pho, where he's like, "Yeah, I call it pho. I know it's wrong, but there's no one um, in Saigon going like, no, it's pronounced meatball sandwich. Like, no, it's... <laughs> <laughs> it happens, okay? I'm going to insist that people in, like, Pennsylvania and be like, actually, it's a Philadelphia sandwich. <laughs> We call it the Rocky here. <laughs> I, I'm trying to remember if I was ever that annoying to anybody because I'm originally from Michigan and we have a lot of mm. weirdly pronounced things, but mostly up north. Well, no, there's a lot of streets in Detroit that are like fake French names because like it was originally a French settlement and you know now it's American, so Show everybody off. mispronounces it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it didn't go. It didn't go great for any of us to be completely sure, fair. Well, hey, what did? <laughs> Uh, but I'm trying. I really hope I was never super annoying about any of those things. But I probably was. So I guess this is just my comeuppance. The only thing, uh, the only thing for us is is just if you say you're from Chicago, but you're actually from like Bolingbrook, then go fuck yourself. That's the main thing in Chicago. Uh, yes. Just don't claim that you're from Chicago if you're from a suburb, and they always do. They always do. Yep, that ha that's pretty common um, in Detroit as well. Uh, famously, the insane clown posse has done that their entire career. Uh, they're they're from a suburb whose name I cannot remember, but like all of the suburbs around the city were generally built during the white flight era. Sure. But it's cool to say you're from the city because that's where the sports teams are, and now right. like hipsters are moving in and gentrifying shit. Right. But they're, they're not doing a great job because it's really hard to gentrify a city that is kind of not cool or fun. <laughs> <laughs> like <laughs> it can be. I've had a lot of fun in Detroit. But yeah, I have too, but it's yeah. not on my it's not on the, the list of places I would like to move back to, that's for sure. Oh no, yeah, that's fair. I like to do comedy there because then I leave. That's one of my favorite, <laughs> that's one of my favorite what, parts. What clubs did you play in? I'm curious if I've ever been to any of them. Because oh, a lot man. of them suck. I but granted, really, I, I haven't been there in a very long time. Wow. I really don't even know. That's That was one of the... So I used to tour in Detroit probably like four or five years in whenever I was really, really bad. Uh, but I was just bad enough to get work and nice all of the names disappeared because i was so nervous and so terrible that the the headliners would just take me out afterwards and i remembered very little, very little. <laughs> so. i mean that's like I, i'm obviously not a comedian but i've heard that like a 90 percent of a comedian's life is just eating shit on stage so i kind of understand <laughs> Well, I mean, we just you just amend your definition of eating shit as you get better. You know, mm. the better you get, the lower your bar or the higher your bar is for eating shit. My partner, she would she would say like, oh, my God, you killed. And I'd be like, no, you don't get it. OK, there is a certain crescendo that's supposed to happen at the end of this bit. And if it doesn't work like that, that then it's shit, you know, like that kind of thing. 
That's one of the things that I'm honestly kind of afraid of ever doing a live show for uh, the Lions Led by Donkeys because I'm like, I'm going to fucking eat shit hard. <laughs> like, people don't realize how nice it is to have an editor. Oh, that's great. <laughs> I mean, I don't have one, but it, it would be great if I did. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well, now that uh, it's about 6 p.m., we're going to switch this up. We're going to show up. Oh, my God, ladies and gentlemen, hello to everybody who has joined me for another episode <laughs> of WMWM. I'm branding that for no reason. Uh, my guest tonight, this evening, is uh, Joe, as his family pronounces it, Casabian, uh, from what I'm told. Uh, <laughs> Nailed it. No, no, <laughs> no corrections. Thank you very much. Very much. Uh, the host of the Lions Led by Donkeys podcast, the uh, writer of the Hooligans of Kandahar. Is uh, did I pronounce that correctly? Nailed that one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Every time. Uh, and uh, a fantastic author. Uh, thank you very much for joining me. Yeah. Thanks for having me. I've never heard of the show before. Um. Though, when you sent me an email and were like, would you like to watch this show called The Magicians with me? I was like, yeah, but this is a great way to discover a new show on Netflix. <laughs> that is not quite the point of, of the show, but I, I don't see any wrong, anything wrong with that. If Sarah Gamble, Sarah Gamble does need to give me uh, royalties for everybody who starts watching the show from this show. So that's that's fine. Uh, let me ask you a quick question. What is your experience with magic as a narrative device? Like growing up, did you read uh, the Lord of the Rings? Did you? What kind of flavor of magic wa was your childhood? If that makes sense. Oh yeah, um, I I was the right age for Lord of the Rings uh, right before the movies came out, mm -hmm. um, and also um, uh, the Harry Potter series before. We learned that J.K. Rowling is a fucking psychopath. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Weren't we all? Weren't we all so right. young and naive? Um, but yeah, it was um, obviously it's uh, definitely influenced me in a writing career. Um, but also I've always seen it as um, uh, like a narrative device for personal growth. Uh, mm -hmm. Of course, you can see it in ways for like uh you know weird power fantasies those are out there too but that's not how i always uh read what i was consuming that's mm -hmm. not how i got out of it so when you describe it as a personal growth kind of thing what is your consistent narrative arc that kind of describes that you know like what's your what's your character that embodies magic as personal growth Ooh, that's a good one um Honestly, it it actually comes from a book called the Sh well a series called the Shadow Campaigns by a guy named Jingo Wexler. Which Is that honestly, Forgotten Realms or no, no, it's uh it, the overall series is called the Shadow Campaigns. Okay, um, but it's it, the main character starts off um completely powerless. Uh, so uh, uh, it's effectively the story is supposed to take place in a gunpowder uh fantasy magical version of the french revolution okay i like it um it honestly i cannot recommend the series enough it <laughs> rules um from an early age you were ready to chop the heads off the rich i like it <laughs> and uh my my soviet immigrant parents would be proud of me um but it, it's uh like she's a um like a closeted gay woman and a very low on the totem pole uh like recruit for this faux French military. Um, and throughout the story, she like better learns how to kind of be herself um, mm -hmm. while also pushing the plot forward, of course. And then there's other people that kind of have the, the opposite effect of that, which is they do have that power fantasy for the, ma uh, for this, um, for the magic in the series, and it completely destroys them. Okay. Um, because they were already bad people, right? Sure. Like, sure. so it, it's also their personal growth into being just terrible. Right, right, right. So, I mean, you're seeing magic then in that context as like a metaphor for any uh, sudden or inherited gain of power. 
you know, where that uh, can corrupt you in a dominating way or it can create a kind of servitude. Does that make? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I assume you're taking the don't dominate path. I'm just going to throw that out there. <laughs> Generally, yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm against that. Um, okay, because like it shows, uh, like all of those series, you know, Lord of the Rings, um, Harry Potter, Shadow sure. Campaigns, you always have people attempting to use it for good because they're inherently good people um, mm. most of the time, um, sure. and then you have people attempting to use it for you know means to an end, uh, which is always like you know the chaotic good who always end up being bad. Um, <laughs> sure, which is its own, which is its own question in uh, uh, something set during the French Revolution. Yes, <laughs> you know, like, oh, yeah. no, the people with power are bad. Anyways, Robespierre, he's got a lot of good ideas, man. This dude. <laughs> yeah, there, there's even a uh, like uh, a Robespierre and a Napoleon in the series. Like, obviously, it's not their name. And instead of like having a guillotine, because that's a little too on the nose, well, I guess. I mean, come on, they it's have, a magic universe. You're not going to use right. a fucking guillotine. Well, they use uh, something called the spike. So, like, <laughs> they strap okay. people down it's to a table a and a giant stake just stabs them <laughs> in the chest. I like it. I, I mean, do you remember? Uh, did you ever see Hot Fuzz? Uh, the Sean Pegg. Yes. Yeah. Well, I think I saw that in theaters. Yeah. There's there's the moment where the guy gets killed by the the spike from the church falling from uh, a hundred feet <laughs> or whatever. And yes. the moment you said spike as a metaphor for guillotine, I'm like, what if we just push spikes on top of people? We got a lot of castles, man. We gotta <laughs> we gotta do something with them. We don't need to build a spike device. Just have no. someone stand in the general direction of a cathedral exactly. and just kick the, the, the top over at them. We've got the technology. <laughs> That's what's important. <laughs> the bold French technology of kicking roofs over on people. I saw the Hunchback of Notre Dame. That is a tradition. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I believe in the spike for a jobs program for the hunch for the hunchbacks <laughs> for the hunchback. of various areas of yeah, France. Absolutely. Agreed. <laughs> All right. So we've already established that, you know, absolutely nothing about the uh, the TV show, The Magicians. So when we start watching this, uh, if you don't mind, I'm going to add the recap to it. Uh, OK, if that sounds uh, all right to you. So when we start, I will press play at the very bit of zero, and then I'll start the timer, and everybody can join in at the same time. So I will begin in five, four, three, two, one. I assume you fully understand what's going on by now. Oh, I'm fully uh, <laughs> uh, apprised of the, the magician situation. <laughs> One of my favorite parts of this show is how dense narratively it is. So, like, plot-wise, every scene packs as much plot as they can and within a minute and a half. So trying to introduce somebody to it at any point in time is absurd. Even the first episode, it doesn't make any goddamn sense. I mean, it's based on a someone uh, in in my podcast Discord told me this is based on a book series, which mm -hmm. explains a lot. Oh, yeah. yeah, Lev Grossman uh, was the writer who was like, "Man, J.K. Rowling has some good ideas, but nobody has P.I.V. sex in it. So let's figure out how to deal with that." <laughs> I mean, I guess we both read different versions of uh, Harry Potter. I actually read Harry Potter's only on Tumblr, so I had plenty of P and V sets. <laughs> I'm glad V was involved for Tumblr. That's nice for them. That's <laughs> it depends. Yeah, you, you got to filter through a lot. Sure, a lot of uh, sure, a lot of a animals while. in there. It takes yeah. a while to get there. <laughs> a lot of magical furries to to sift through. <laughs> I dig this, uh, I'm who I am assuming is the main character. It looks like he could play in a Nirvana cover band. 
<laughs> yeah, basically. Yep. And he's whiny, in case you were wondering if the hair <laughs> didn't do it for you. I mean, it's strategically covering one eye, so I'm going to assume he's insufferable. That's right. If you have hair that covers one eye, you're saying a lot. Yeah. I say that as someone who went to school in the mid-2000s, so yeah, that was me. <laughs> yes, yeah, so the chat has wished you happy birthday as well. I hope uh, oh, everybody I thank agrees. you. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> it's certainly a birthday <laughs> on the worst day in recent American history. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Trigger warning. Abortion is legal in this universe. So I know for a lot of our viewers, that's a trigger now. How unrealistic in this show about magic. <laughs> oh, my God. We're all going to die. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we are. funny and I want to kill myself. <laughs> I, I, I think I made the joke yesterday that I was actually immigrating from the United States to Armenia to escape Ezra Miller in Hawaii, where I currently live. <laughs> um, and I actually need to revise as escaping the Supreme Court. There was a, there was a great comedian who died in the past couple of years. His name was Barry Crimmins. Uh, and one of his jokes that was just amazing was, um, I would leave this country, but the only thing I hate more than America's domestic policy is America's foreign policy. So I'm fucked. The secret is, is you have to move somewhere that American foreign policy has never even heard of. Like, so far down the totem pole that, like, Henry Kissinger's, like, post-dead, bloated imperial god corpse you to, can't find you, you on a map. somewhere where a lot of people don't recognize the genocide. Is that what you're yeah. trying to say? Yeah. 100%. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That'll do if it. If you, like, it, don't have oil, have no <laughs> natural resources. Right. Nobody has any fucking reason to come steal my brandy. Mm. Like, I'm, I'm safe. That's always been my trick. Living in <laughs> Chicago, I don't have anything anybody wants to steal. So, done and done. It reminds me of a meme of uh, someone in Detroit had their porch stolen. <laughs> Can't fucking have anything in this city, man. Uh, I see he carries the same thing in his pockets as I did when I was in high school. <laughs> a chip on your shoulder? <laughs> it's a grip full of pills. <laughs> I found That's these. Way to do it. <laughs> <laughs> None of these are mine. <laughs> I was never a pill guy. I was just a leave guy with no... I was an Irish goodbye as a way of life. Just like, <laughs> oh, there was a lot of people talking. Goodbye. <laughs> I was like, um, I was open to opportunities guy. Like I wasn't <laughs> huge on, on any particular drug, but if you had it and you're willing to give it to me for free, I'm willing to try it. <laughs> I was a herpes success story guy. That's what I <laughs> <laughs> That's how you, many people don't know, that's how you broke onto the comedy scene, was doing like a herpes PSA. <laughs> right. That guy's one of the, that guy's one of the great, that guy's. I really don't know who he is, but every time I've seen him, he's just been fantastic. <laughs> Love his work. Oh, man. His crazy hair, that's, I aspire. <laughs> Okay, so this is one of the examples of arbitrary rules uh, that I was talking to you about prior to the show. So the whole vibe here is these guys are what's called travelers. So they can teleport instantly to wherever it is they want to go. But one of the okay. arbitrary rules is they can do it whenever. You know, if you're, if you're dreaming, then you can wake up in a volcano or whatever nonsense that is. But narratively, you know that's not going to happen, period. That would be know? a very uh, creative way to to end the show. Is like, 
the main character teleport himself into a fucking that volcano is, at the end. <laughs> at the end of every show. Yeah. <laughs> like C-Lab 2021. <laughs> and nobody would see that shit coming in like the Gilmore Girls. That is the problem with the Gilmore Girls. Not enough teleportation to volcanoes. Mm-hmm. That's inarguable. <laughs> Oh, one reason that I wanted you specifically for this episode uh, is that this is our magic game episode. So instead of Quidditch, uh, which doesn't make any sense, obviously, we're going to play whatever happens in this game, which does probably make a little bit of sense. Some (laughs) sense somewhere. See, look, he's doing the thing with his fingers. (laughs) arbitrary rules why do you have to do the thing with your fingers what about magic requires the thing with your fingers uh i don't know maybe it's because they don't have um I don't know what's what's the thing from Full Metal Alchemist tattooed on his body? <laughs> transmutation circles. Yeah, yeah, he does that. Yeah, do a transmutation <laughs> circle. <laughs> we have a title. We did it. We got to the part. <laughs> you said the thing. I do not. I, there's nothing quite so satisfying as when a movie says its title in the movie. Mm. <laughs> Makes me so happy. I don't know why. A lot of people think it's cheesy or terrible. Nope. I want it. I need it. That's it's, it's why I can't watch uh, Passion of the Christ. I never say it. <laughs> Oh, this is such a passion of the Christ. (laughs) What's your line reading? (laughs) Some people might say he has (laughs) the passion of the Christ. Thank you, Mel. That'll be all. All right. That's a good one. Oh, to Bruce Willis. Looks like he's got the passion of the Christ going on. But somehow, since it's it's uh, it's him, it turned into a cop drama. <laughs> He's trying to arrest Jesus. He's got like a funny comedian partner. Chris Tucker makes an appearance. Pontius Pilate's made a run for it. <laughs> <laughs> Bruce, we gotta arrest this Jesus. Listen, I didn't kill Jesus. I don't care. <laughs> Inexplicably, he's also looking for his daughter. Oh man, Jesus's daughter. That's that's the that's the movie right there. <laughs> I think we've just come up with Jerusalem taken. <laughs> Jerusalem has fallen. <laughs> 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 Gerard Butler is Joseph. Oh no! <laughs> I'm gonna get my son back. <laughs> Listen, boy, I know you're not mine, <laughs> but you're the Lord's. <laughs> <laughs> How did a Scottish guy get all the way here? Where's my daughter? This is Jerusalem! (laughs) Look, I'm just saying, if we would have pitched this to Netflix six months ago before they fired everyone, we'd probably get a fucking green light. Oh, totally. It's a shame. No, 40% of my life is just missed opportunities to toss ideas in front of Netflix producers for no money. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much my secondary career as an author. There's various people who want to sell scripts to Netflix saying, well, nobody was interested. Like, yeah, I'm aware. No, no. <laughs> uh, 
I, they just really don't like uh, my rider, which is Idris Elba plays me in Hooligans of Kandahar. Ooh, that's going to be tough. I, I don't know. I think you might be interested. We have a lot in common. Oi, I've been on medium for 40 years now. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know that this would be perfect because it pissed everyone off I was in the army with and also the entire Armenian community at the same time. That's a good idea. Yeah, I gotta shoot I gotta shoot right down the middle. Great scene, guys. I didn't expect a uh, mental hospital glee to show up. Oh, totally. The whole thing. <laughs> no, and this magic really is almost one to one, like a an expression of everybody's individual social, uh, you know, atypical disorders or other a neurotype that is uh, outside of just the norm. So everybody who can do magic is also existing in the space of like. Oh well, I have bipolar disorder, and that is the the magic. You know what I'm saying? Oh, okay. God, I would hate to see a VA hospital. <laughs> <laughs> VA magical hospital sounds like the worst fucking thing on earth. You know, that's that's a that's an interesting thing about magic. Whenever I think about writing uh, anything with magic in it, the idea of a hospital for a magical battle seems insane to me. You know, like it's instantaneous. If you have the power to alter physics, then imagine a giant house on top of your enemy's head and then he's gone. How could there be a hospital? You know, you're in or you're out 100%. Right. Like, I feel like a lot of things that have magic include them. And again, I have no idea about this uh, show is that a lot of it depends on someone not wanting to be a fucking supervillain. Yeah. Like, uh, I think the boys does this very well in, in the in the recent season when like Homelander's like, I'm going to be able to do what I want or I'm literally going to destroy the planet. Everybody's like, sure. OK, <laughs> like do what you do, homie. <laughs> I mean, I guess that's not technically magic, but like. Same no, thing, it right? Is. It is. All magic to me, and I'm I'm including, and that's part of the struggle for me because I'm including religion. I'm including anything where you break the laws of physics. Why can't you break any of the other ones? There's always that rule. Right. Like, oh, okay, so I can run fast. Why just that? There's just arbitrary bullshit reasons for it. And I hate uh, it. The midichlorian levels aren't high enough, oh! Jordan. <laughs> oh, you brought up a sore spot. <laughs> <laughs> I I agree. Like, there's um, there's a couple pieces of fiction out there that I think do really well, where like magical abilities are signed randomly at birth through mm -hmm. like mumbo jumbo genes or whatever. So sure. like, occasionally, uh, I believe uh, the gunpowder. Um, uh, what is it? Ah, damn it! Can't remember what it's called now. Uh, it's another gunpowder fantasy book, but like uh, they have powder mages who are like have magical powers to control gunpowder and explosions and, and bullets and stuff. Cocaine. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, occasionally there's people who are born with a little bit of magical power, but like not enough to do anything really cool. Mm hmm. Um, like someone could see, can like, can kind of sort of tell when someone's lying to them and it's sure. called like being knacked. So sure, like sure, there's sure. different levels of magical ability, uh, expanding it's a from Ben and just uh, you know, <laughs> to bring it back to Dune as I w always will. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, there's, I think there's ways around it, but you know, one of the problems is like us as the audience are always gonna be like, okay, but why can't I do this? And then it's like. And as someone, as I'm sure you're aware, since you've wrote, uh, written a book, uh, you can just be like, because it's fun that way. <laughs> like, I've been at conventions where people ask me questions, but because I, I didn't I didn't do that. I, I don't know what you want from me. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we had to kill the author. I was I was in critical theory. I've done the thing. Huh. Yeah. Uh, sometimes it's harder to kill some authors more than others. 
<laughs> I said that to Woody Allen, and he just won't go away. <laughs> <laughs> Roman Polanski still kicking oh, around out there. Son of yeah. Bitch. I mean, Henry Kissinger wrote a book. I'm still supporting that one, too. Yeah, sure. Well, the thing is, it works for me with music. I finally got Phil Spector put away. That was me, in case you were wondering. Mm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so there's the long con. recognize the song yes yeah i was gonna say you're 34 come on man <laughs> <laughs> you're my age you better recognize this you better, yeah, yeah is that song that old i don't think it's that old is it what 2008 no 2004 Ugh, is Something it really like that old that. yeah we're we're dead basically yeah fair enough Better off this way. In climate change years is sixty five in you know industrial revolution years. It's accelerating the process by picking up various drugs along the way. <laughs> That's the way to do it. Doing okay, a speed so if you run. Do the finger thing wrong, you'll hurt yourself. I mean, that's true with other finger things. <laughs> yeah, my, my like you, how, you know when you're a kid and your parents like if you keep making that face your uh your face isn't gonna get stuck that way but it's like that with your fingers that's why sure. i have to type with my hand stuck in the shocker at all times <laughs> oh man what if you're a magician and all of a sudden you got carpal tunnel syndrome in the murder spell. And you're just wandering <laughs> around. Oh, oh, God damn it. This is King Midas all over again. I oh. accidentally carpal tunneling your way to becoming magical Hitler. <laughs> well, I mean, eventually you're just going to lean in. Yeah. If there's nothing else you can do. That guy's main character trait, in case you weren't sure, was wears a suit. Ah, uh, so he works for the government. Well, you know. <laughs> magical government? Uh, he, I'm assuming there's a magical government. There always is. He abuses his bureaucratic power. Uh, is that That's basically the same thing. Yeah. There's got to be some, like, badly underfunded magical, like, department somewhere. Like the EPA, but for people who can do weird shit, their fingers. You know, that was that's my like original base idea for a magic school story. Is like, what is the magic school in bumfuck nowhere that's underfunded, that's not taken care of, and there's some dude who's just doing his best trying to teach these kids, you know? But once you add magic, how do you make it poor? <laughs> that's a good point you know like if i had magical powers as a kid i probably wouldn't have been on fucking food stamps you're goddamn right <laughs> it'd be really easy to rob a bank if i could kill people with mm -hmm. like with with a hard thought you know what i mean <laughs> it'd be easier to rob a bank if you didn't even have to go in there and you could just yeah blink it uh, you know you could just i dream of genie it wherever you wanted to go just night crawling into the safe Hell or whatever yeah. Oh, man. Nightcrawler is the shit. The Jaws chess player is a nice touch. <laughs> oh, yeah. Do the finger thing. <laughs> you have to roll a D20. Obviously. <laughs> Obviously. Obviously. Someone standing just off the side, like you missed. Mm -mm. Shit. Mm -mm. That's a that's a nine, not an eleven, douchebag. Your hit class ain't no. <laughs> Is it a globe? Just so we're linked, uh, just so we're synced up. Uh, what minute are you on on your Netflix at the moment? Mm. Uh. It's somewhere around 2158 or so. 
21 yeah, to 58. 21 okay. to 54, 55 in the, that's what the timer says. Okay. Just making sure we're on the same. Oh, that's the secret square. Oh, everybody's so tense. Murmur. Murmur, 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 murmur. <laughs> Isn't magic dumb? <laughs> then stop him. Why is everybody just okay with letting this happen if they're like, oh, it's out of control? You have magic. Yeah. Stop it with your magic. There's some rule against that. Everybody knows that. <laughs> Whoa! I am so confused. <laughs> yeah, totally. Don't even worry about it. <laughs> Let me tell you something. None of this is established. <laughs> you should be confused. His dad's sick, but that's basically all you know at this point. Right. She might as well be saying nonsense and nonsense speak. This is Seeger Rose song as dialogue. <laughs> I always forget. So the thing about Margot in the early season, she is, you know, a nothing character that that kind of uh, subordinate woman character who is also right. a sex symbol. Three seasons in, she is the greatest character on this fucking show by a wide margin. Well written, well, uh, uh, uh you know, just just coming into her own power. It's kind of amazing how, how she transforms. It's almost like it was a deliberate choice. <laughs> Character development? What's that? I've been watching too many Marvel movies, my friend. <laughs> oh, yeah, that'll do it. <laughs> I, I think that's like I stopped being able to watch those quite a few movies ago. Mm-hmm. Because they were all fun. I mean, I'm also not a huge superhero guy. Like, I was never into those comics. I was always sure. a, like a manga nerd, honestly. Yeah. So, like, the CGI clusterfucks weren't really my jam. I think the mm. last one I saw in theaters is like the first Iron Man. <laughs> all right. <laughs> like, show off. Fuck you. You missed I think the last 20 years of the most dominant cultural force in the world. Fine. I wish I could say I missed it. <laughs> Uh, because even though I haven't seen any of them, I sure. generally know what happens. Yeah, in all well, of, of course, on account of it being the most dominant cultural force in the world. Yeah, I mean, like I oh, I saw um, what's what Venom? I saw the the first the the two Venom movies. Yeah, but those aren't superhero movies. Those are opportunities for uh, coolness to happen. Yeah, yeah, and it was just surface level enough that I was able to buy in. Sure. Like, <laughs> and no, I did not fucking watch Morbius. <laughs> no, nobody watched Morbius. I didn't that even is, watch it ironically. No, 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 that it was re-released in theaters, it blows my mind. How do you not see the internet coming? That's Lucy's football. Whatever executive was like, oh, the internet, it's a buzz, should have seen that coming a while back. I, I got to give credit to people like they managed to shit posts a multi what hundred like billion dollar yep. company into fucking like completely torching a pile of money a second oh, yeah. time. Yep. Um, and honestly, I think if we 
really put our minds to it, we can get him a third time. Totally. No, <laughs> like, no, no. People are dumb. Trick. People are dumb. Like, no, we'll, we'll, we'll promise or actually, honestly, what I think the problem is going to be is that they're going to make a Morbius 2 and they're going to <laughs> attempt, they're going to attempt to do this like meme movie, but on purpose. And it's going to be fucking awful, but not in a funny way. That's what I truly fear is they're going to use our irony against us. You can't use irony against us. We'll just not pay attention. <laughs> That's true. We'll, move yeah. on. we'll tweet about something else. What do you, what do you get win? <laughs> like most people who, uh, who watched it, I think watched the pirated version on like a Twitch stream. <laughs> so like, <laughs> you'll never get us. You sons of bitches. Yeah, I mean, I barely pay for movies as it is. Like, I'm about to cancel my Netflix account because, like, it's going to die in a couple of years anyway, well, I mean, and there's nothing on here. Armenia. Do they have Netflix there? Oh, yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. I mean, that was obviously racist and condescending. I was kind of being joking. I, <laughs> that would be no. really awful. If I was, oh, my God, do you guys have ice cream there, too? What's <laughs> uh, it like? So, well, someone <laughs> honestly asked me, she's like, so what are you going to do for, like, a car? I'm like... Well, I'll use the subway, actually. <laughs> oh, they have, have those there? <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah, they do. You can go anywhere and probably find better public transportation than here. Yeah, I mean, like, it's a low fucking bar. And I know, uh, depending on where you live, like, I, I guess there's a public transit in, like, Chicago and mm. New York and stuff like that. But I've never lived in any of those places, <laughs> you know? <laughs> There was a, we just watched a movie recently called uh, Watcher, and it's this uh, American woman who's in Bucharest. She's transported to Bucharest for, you know, a reason, following a man, like movies do. Right. Uh, and the public transportation, every time they show it, it's so much better than the L. <laughs> <laughs> you watch it and you're like, really? Come on. We're fucking Chicago. Really? My personal favorite public transport thing that I saw was some absolute lunatic Tesla guy, uh, yeah, like using the the Boston Big Dig as a, <laughs> as like a good example of of how to do public transit. Right. I'm like, come on, man! Like that's it. it's famous for one specific reason. <laughs> no, they did it right. Uh, we have uh, like a monorail system in Honolulu that sucks. Monorail, yeah, that's monorail. right. And uh, they got train cars for the rail that are the wrong size. Um, Be still so that's my safe. Beating heart. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what a Public transit sight. with Aloha. My, uh, my wife was telling me about one of the policies that her principal was enacting at her school, and it was uh, so much just smoke and mirrors nonsense to waste money but make people feel good. It was... It was the, like, I literally screamed at her. I was like, it's a monorail. It's a monorail. <laughs> Just doing a monorail. Just scream at people, the Simpsons. Like, that should be enough to explain. <laughs> I don't know, Jordan. This sounds like more of a Shelbyville kind of thing. No, she's doing a monorail. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why that, that should be culturally strong enough now that it is completely acceptable to just say monorail and everybody's like, oh, I got it, and then quits. Yeah, I mean, like, I think it's 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 so good now that people uh, recognize that, like, people get mad when you call things a monorail. Oh yeah, I'm furious. G, you said the word monorail, and I sang it at you <laughs> immediately. I didn't even think about what you had to say. I mean, there's they built one in in Detroit called the People Mover because they had to think of an even <laughs> dumber name for it. I mean, and like I know there's the human maybe this... ambulator. <laughs> what if we had uh, a centipede made of humans? <laughs> um, hey, eating and I... ass is really important these days. Kendrick made an album about it. I, I respect a man who has hobbies, uh, but like it was so worthless. I mean, I've heard that it's gotten better. I don't know, but uh, the and people doing mover what? was moving people. 
moving people in a small <laughs> circle around city center. Yeah. Uh, I've heard it's gotten better. Um, but, uh, like when I was a kid, it was so bad that people called it the people mugger. Um, <laughs> Because the only thing that happened is people not from Detroit got on the people mover and got robbed. Well, <laughs> that's your choice. <laughs> <laughs> Personal responsibility is an important part of life. <laughs> <laughs> and I made the choice to not get on the people mover. I had one of the best nights, uh, one of the best nights of my life in Detroit. I saw Kings of Convenience there, uh, you know, the Norwegian Simon and Garfunkel that everybody loved from twenty years ago. I've never even heard of them. Yeah, you and every fucking buddy else. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Like, there's a weird Swedish band does a tour of Detroit of all places. They were not huge, but in a certain spot, in a certain time, a Norwegian and Simon and Garfunkel could tour the world. Fair enough. I mean, there was a lot of weird folk bands that got super popular after Mumford and Sons made the same song 18 times. Totally. Beck's still alive. Nobody's eaten him yet, so clearly folk music works. His body is alive. His soul belongs to Zeno. <laughs> oh my god, that's right. He is a Scientologist. <laughs> yeah, what yes. A fucking like idiot. a hella Scientologist. <laughs> what do you even do? On the daily, what do you do? <laughs> as a I don't know. You either like work 28 hours a day or you're fine, right? You're just famous. Yeah, you either are in their weird sea org, like ecclesiastical militia, sure, um, who are effectively slaves, or you're like the, God, the celebrities I, I they who they know they too much slaves. about. It believes the slaves didn't like their bosses. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Uh, I'm honestly curious, like, because like a huge part of it is like blackmail. So I really am curious, like, how many of them are true believers, which I'm going to assume because they're all famous Hollywood types at number zero. They don't believe in anything. Sure. Yeah. Um, but what they have on them, you know, like what is so goddamn terrible that you're like, yeah, uh, this LRH is the best guys. It rules. If L. Ron Hubbard starts a religion, it's not hard enough. That's what, that's my only take on that, is it should be harder than L. Ron Hubbard starting it. And until it is, all religion is fake to me. You know, I got to respect the man's flex as a fellow sci-fi author. Um, <laughs> when you realize that sci-fi doesn't pay enough, I got to create a fucking religion. And he did have, you know, his own navy. Um, sure, sure. No, that's there something are that's a big selling there point. There are achievements yeah. there. <laughs> I mean, you don't, you don't have to, you don't have to hand it to L. Ron Hubbard. No, you got to give it up to L. Ron Hubbard, <laughs> <laughs> hero of uh, uh, of mental health. He's dead! Uh, oh, no, he's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, they're only dead if they die on screen. Absolutely. Absolutely. Later on, he dives off screen, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> well, that'll fucking show of, me. Of all the characters for you to say that about, this guy specifically dies off screen. That'll fucking show me. <laughs> See, if he had his thetans uh, uh, leveled out, this wouldn't happen. That's true. I love this guy cast as a dad because I don't know if there's ever been more of a central casting just dad. Like, that guy <laughs> could not do any other role than dad blank, you know? Yeah. I mean, it's a good niche to have. Like, there's certain that guys that play the same part a hundred times, like being the unoffensive president. Totally. No, it's great. It's great. 
Debo was the president in <laughs> yeah that <laughs> ruled that was the yeah. best <laughs> okay the weird magical penguin with metal teeth is fucking creepy <laughs> I, I'm gonna say that that guy <laughs> Debo from uh from Friday. Yeah, exactly. Who has been in a lot of other movies as a very good actor. However, he's Nah, he's Debo. Debo. Yeah, he's Debo forever. Forever. Yeah. Sorry. Not my fault. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder what? if he it, I'm always curious if people who fall into roles like that hate that. Or they like it, you know. They're all, no matter what they do, they're always going to be known as like blank because it's sure. not like they all got to play Harry Potter, where the guy is going to be cashing that check until his like great 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 grandkids are dead. Right, right. But right. like you know, you're Debo from Friday and Friday After Next or whatever, <laughs> you know. Uh, I don't know. You can go any direction in that, you know. You're like, yeah, hell yeah, this is the greatest. I get work. How many people get work? Yeah, yeah sure, I guess I could be a yeah, better actor and I could be fucking broke and starving. So that's one way to look at it. Yeah, I guess it's like being a mid-tier WWF guy from the 90s. You don't sure. have a lot going for you, but you can still cash checks on the convention circuit. Right. Well, you know, I... Oh, I, Debo I, died. Someone <laughs> just said in the chat. Oh, no. Well, no. rest in peace, homie. We'll always remember he yeah, was Debo. Sure. <laughs> sure, Debo. God damn it. Debo in peace. No, in in the Chicago improv community, you'll you'll meet a lot of people who have, like, commercial campaigns. So the Sonic guys, those are Chicago dudes. Like, Second really? City. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, they... I think Sonic has changed, but... Yeah, that was them. So I know you're talking about the fast food place, but I'm going to insist that you're talking about the hedgehog. Instead. Sure, that's fair. <laughs> I mean, we're what is is it? It's not Ryan Reynolds. It's uh, what's his name? Oh, geez, the weird cult guy. Yeah, totally. No, and he's um, great. Love him. Fantastic. He's great on Parks and Rec or whatever. Yeah, it was all downhill from there. He turned yeah. into like an action star. Yeah, and is involved in a super bigoted church that hates gay people. Really. Yeah, yeah, oh, he's uh, yeah, it's unfortunate. God, I can't remember his fucking name now. Yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, I liked um, Guardians of the Galaxy. I did see, I did, I saw both. Oh of no, those. no, you're right. talking about one of the uh, Chris Pratt's. I'm yeah, talking I'm talking about, about Chris Pratt. The the uh, the agent of chaos. What's his name? With the hair. Is the he's the son of the thing? Jenny Slade is his sister. God damn it! This is what this movie? Is exactly what the, I want this show to be is a grandma being like, "Who was that in that?" One <laughs> show? It's a it's a stream of us trying to remember guys from years no, ago. I mean, I thought it was going to be people trying to understand who is. Yeah, Ben Schwartz. That's who it is. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm sure he's fine. Yeah, I, no, I didn't mean to imply he was a part of a, of a bigoted cult. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm waiting for the chat to like. There are going to be an extra hundred people jumping into the chat right now to scream at us. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I mean, as people who do podcasts, we're well aware of what happens as soon as we forget what something is and it's on the tip of our tongue. That's how life. That's how uh, life works. I still get messages from something I I forgot like four years ago. But I don't know if anybody told you this, but I'm like it's been a while. Yeah, totally. I've been I've been I've been I've been uh, aware. <laughs> no, yeah, you you. It's it's fun whenever things from the past are still around that people find brand new. <laughs> yeah, like, I've had there were there were a couple episodes where we had arguments or something and. People have emailed us on like a Friday and been like, oh, I am. And then on Monday, they're like, oh, well, I listened to the next episode when you guys worked this out. And he really did a good job. And you're like, okay. <laughs> okay, fine. <laughs> or I, I start like a seven part series because uh, we do those a lot over on our yeah. show. And I'll be like part one. And so I'm like, well, are you going to cover this thing about the same? Like, well, you have six more hours to get through so yeah <laughs> get your shit together <laughs> <laughs> and don't get me wrong 
love my fans. Uh, <laughs> but when like four million people listen to your show, you're gonna get some weird guys. Oh shit! Four million people. <laughs> God damn! Show off. Hey, you guys were in the New York Times. <laughs> <laughs> Niche, niche stuff, <laughs> niche stuff will get further. I'll tell you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm just riding the wave of being friends with Robert Evans and getting you on the show at one point. Like, I, this has nothing to do That's with me. Sure. <laughs> but, uh, my numbers suggest I'm a draw. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. This is the big dramatic finale. There it is. Mm. He was in Fillory. All right, we're going to turn the timer off. All right. So, yeah, Fillory is that universe's, uh, uh, what would you call it, Narnia. Narnia in that it is the home of Lion Jesus? Basically. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's one good way to put it. All right. So, oh, hold on. What happened? Oh, no, it is still streaming. Sorry. Uh, yeah. What did you think? <laughs> we watched the like last episode lot. together. Yeah. We, we really focused on what happened. How do you feel about the magicians? Honestly, I'm, I'm intrigued enough to go and start watching it or reading it myself because <laughs> it's a cool premise. So everyone in my Discord insists that the show sucks. Um, but... I and sometimes I enjoy shows that kind of suck. You know, I, they don't have to be quality; they have to be entertaining. Right? Sure, 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 sure. No, I, I, it's it's a sci-fi show, you know, with all that entails. Uh, and for me, it is not about the quality of the show so much right. as like there is there is something to analyze there for me personally that I feel like I can take away from it. And so every time I've I've watched it, I feel like there's a narrative element that I think is both like wrong that I should learn from. And also there are certain things that are like right on that I really believe are the way that you can handle this type of subject. Hmm. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't know <laughs> if I asked. Fuck I don't you. know if I asked. Yeah. Uh, first, uh, first of all, how dare you? Fair um, enough. Fair uh, enough. Actually, Accepted. I was. I don't know if I asked you this yet. Um, but uh, did you read the books? I did. I oh, read. Okay. I well, I read the first book. I didn't know there were other. Uh, there were other books. Honestly, are there other books? I uh, maybe I'm just implying that there are and there aren't. I think there are. I'm oh, fairly okay. certain that there's a, a whole series about it, but I do know that the later seasons of the show are more about what uh, Sarah Gamble, the show runner was specifically angling towards, you know? Oh, I hate so that. it wasn't as much. Well, I think it was a pretty big improvement. <laughs> ah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I know. I, I get overprotective as an author. Whenever anybody's even my own editors, like, have you tried doing this? I'm like, have you tried going and fucking yourself? <laughs> sure. Sure. Um, but I honestly, the uh, the framing of uh, their magical powers being like manifestations of their mental illness, yeah, is honestly incredible. I've never seen that done by anyone really? before, quite like that. Not like wow. that. Wow. Yeah, that's um, interesting. I've always felt that there was. A, that's part of why I've always identified with it is because I felt that there was an undercurrent of almost judgment towards people because if you are too good at magic then your imagination is too strong you're 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 like a danger in right. in everything that i've always read you know like i always think of the the dragon lance uh did you ever read the, the dragons of autumn twilight and those things uh, no. I okay, haven't. well, that's fair. So there were these Dungeons and Dragons books uh, Margaret Weiss and Tracy Hickman wrote based on their like role-playing experience. And the main character that, that resonated with people was this guy named Raceland, 
Uh, and he was the quintessential, like, magic is the gift and the curse. Mm. And so that's where I've always associated mental illness with magic is because for me, you know, obviously, I've always felt like bipolar disorder was both a gift and a curse, you know? Yeah. Um, and I mean, I... Uh, anybody who's ever listened or read uh, uh, any of my stuff knows that I also suffer from mental illness, though mine's a little different. Um, and then also in the same way, um, it's definitely a gift and a curse, a uh, punishment gift and a curse, whatever, sure. Sure. <laughs> depending on how dark I'm being in any particular day. No, that's, um, a good, that's a good point. Let me ask you a question. This is also part of the, the show is like, have you had a diagnosis? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh um, fuck it. That's how I respond to that. Yeah. Hey, have you had to, oh, you better fucking believe. Yeah, yeah. yeah I was diagnosed uh, as, I mean, this is a long time ago, so I'm sure the wording of the diagnosis has probably changed over time. Mm-hmm. Maybe, you know, being slightly more sensitive. Uh, you, you had cuckoo bananas town brain. Yeah. That was yeah. The my diagnosis. my my doctor pu- like pushed up his monocle like son. You have a <laughs> you got bad brain. Uh, now I was uh, diagnosed like as you've got a woman brain. Sir. I don't know what quite what's going on with you. We're going to implant goat <laughs> testicles. Um, uh, I was diagnosed as what they called manic depressive uh, when I was a young teenager. Hell yeah, that's the shit right there. Um, and then, uh, I lied about that and enlisted in the military. Um, and now I'm diagnosed with post-traumatic stress disorder. Sure. So sure. yeah, that, that comes with your VA benefits. Um, yeah. but you know, it's, uh, it's always been interesting to see how these things are framed because generally they're, they're framed as, uh, like you're an uncontrolled crazy person, right? Sure. Um, like growing up, uh, I know you're uh, what, about a year older than me, uh, like consuming media with, um, uh, any mentally ill characters in it. It was like, they're, it's only a matter of time before they fly off the handle and murder sure, someone, sure. you know, uh, there was no like humanization of anybody. Right, right. Um, right. so it's always nice to see, I mean, even though these people are all literally in an asylum, but like, <laughs> Yeah, but but the, yeah, that, that's just like uh i mean from what i saw of course like i'm missing a lot of context but like it's it's nice You're really to see. not <laughs> <laughs> you know it's it's incredible that it's four episodes into a show and i'm not missing any context uh it's i mean it writing. is it is one of those things where there is so much plot there's too much plot there's to the plot to the point where you you stop really paying attention to what's happening and you start just feeling how are these people feeling in their general vibe you know right. all of their problems are just yours but heightened the stakes are bigger but it's really just people reacting to the same crises that you would you know like Okay, fine. So this guy's got magical powers. That's the same thing as if you go to work and your boss is a real piece of shit, you know? Right. But the stakes are bigger. You can still it, see that feeling. Yeah. And it human, like, even though they're, you know, quite literally beyond human with their powers, sure. like, you're, the whole point is humanizing them. Yeah. Um, and like that's not and, and you're they're being humanized while being very clearly shown to have mental illness. Yeah. Um, uh, which is something that really doesn't I mean, even now things are getting slightly better, of course, but like still now it's like not really that good, you know? Yeah, no, totally. Uh especially if uh they frame a character as Uh, coming out of a hospital or they're in treatment or whatever like you get the brooding guy with the hair combed over one eye but you don't get like you don't get to learn anything about them you know sure 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 no i've been i've been in uh i've been in the spot i've been in the pokey uh (laughs) yeah i mean i've Uh, I've definitely worn grippy socks before yeah uh, you know um and like have you have you felt like on the whole the the mental profession or whatever has been kind of helpful towards you or do you feel like sometimes it's been more of a detriment um when i was a kid significantly a detriment 
Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, this yeah, is yeah, yeah, yeah. early two yeah. thousands, uh, late nineties. You know, certainly the time for uh, for a uh, um, <laughs> progressive mental health care in America, <laughs> right? Uh, and I, you know, I was a kid in a, in a bad neighborhood, being raised by uh, a single mom who, despite her best efforts, you know, she had to work three jobs or whatever. Yeah. Um, we had no health care. Um, nothing. So, you know, we self-medicated and committed crimes. Sure. Sure. Um, so I ended up in juvie an awful lot. Um, I was, I almost ended up in adult prison when I was 15. No shit. So like, yeah, like my mental health was like, the state was going to kill me, uh, on a long enough timeline. Yeah. Um, but you know, I uh, did the very not healthy option of running away to the military, which I cannot stress enough. Don't do that. Wow. Um, but that ended up, you know, and the the attitude in the military at the time was also not very good. Um, it got a lot better. Um, mm-hmm. I guess that they kind of have no choice when they throw a generation into a meat grinder. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, but, when you see the the rates of suicide sooner or later, even the military is going to be like, we got to deal with this somehow. Yeah, they can't yeah. just like blame everybody for their own suicides for that long and expect right. people to keep sticking around. Right. Uh, but now, uh, thankfully, in 2022, um, it's a lot better. Um, like I can there's numerous things available to me if I want them. However, like I still think. Um, the, the idea of being open with these things mm-hmm. is still like on the hush hush. I know like our, I think our perceptions are a bit skewed because we live and work effectively in a very progressive online space. Sure. Sure. Absolutely. Um, no, no, no. That's for sure. But like, you know, when you talk to anybody who's considered, I don't know, more normal, uh, than us. They're gonna be like, oh, I don't, I don't want to hear about that. Like, oh, the, you know, that's cousins. So, you know, he is bipolar, or you know, you know, those those veterans are gonna fly off and kill someone or whatever. Um, totally. Like it's a no, whole. It's been it's a whole tagline in Rambo. For the past three <laughs> years, I haven't been afraid that if an employer looks into something, they'll find out that I'm bipolar and will just fire me. You know. Yeah. And I know mm-hmm. that's illegal, but what is legal and not legal these days? Oh, that's more of a vibe depending on how good their lawyers are. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, how how defensible what they do is. Right. And like I worked um, as an EMT and a medic for a while before I made it as an author and then eventually as a accidental historian, I suppose. Um, <laughs> that's one way to put it. But, like, I ran into some hitching points along the way. Like, despite the fact I had a criminal record, and an extensive one, I should point out. Um, <laughs> like, they, that it, just it's means long. you had a good one. You had yeah, an accomplished I, record. That's the I way will to put say it. my criminal record is longer than my military one. <laughs> um, and the, I, the because the fact I've been hospitalized and on medication at uh, various points of my life, that hurt me more than again ha- almost having a felony conviction yeah so like you know we we've taken uh, more than a few steps forward but when in reality we really need to get into a car and drive several laps yeah uh just to catch up to where we need to be totally did you so when you were pre-military you said that you were di- diagnosed as manic depressive which later on became bipolar disorder and then right. later on, after the military, you're described as PTSD. Did d- is there a like any continuity with the first diagnosis, or did they just go like, ah, PTSD covers basically everything? Let's be honest. Uh, probably a little bit from column A, a little bit from column B, quite yeah. honestly. Um, and you know, life in the military actually did enough to kind of help me uh, self treat i guess not with drugs or alcohol mind you sure 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 um, no, no, no. discipline structure that kind yeah. of yeah, yeah yeah i didn't have a choice but to go to work i didn't sure, have a no, choice it's a, it's, otherwise you go to prison no like. it's kind of a it's kind of a cognitive behavioral therapy in its way you know? right it is it is it's not a workbook but it's not far off no you and know, and I'm not a post workbook and by no means am i saying this is a good option um it it worked for me 
I guess. Yeah, no, of course not. Like, I don't even know if I would say <laughs> this worked work for, for me. You? No, yeah. I mean, like, Listen, I wouldn't got blown up. Like, like, <laughs> space. It did not work for you. <laughs> yeah. Like, I think probably making healthy friendships and exercising helped more than anything else. Sure. Um, but yeah, like, um, I'm sure uh, being previously diagnosed and then absolutely not having it taken care of probably made me more susceptible to, uh, you know, um, experiencing uh, post-traumatic stress reactions, which yeah. then, you know, turn into disorder, for sure, um, for sure. which I also took years to take care of, right? Yeah. Um, because, you know, you're told, uh, I mean, this is 2010-ish, 2000, uh, I got out in 2013. Mm -hmm. um, you know, back then it was like, Oh, you need to go talk to a therapist, you pussy. You know, right, right, like, right, right. No, no, no. I was disgusting there. Shit. Absolutely. Yeah, just disgusting shit. Uh, which thankfully that attitude has changed somewhat. Unfortunately, the people that were in the army back then are the leaders of the army now. So some of that belief still carries over. You are like this close from General Flynn having taken over completely so <laughs> right yeah uh his <laughs> brother is actually places. uh still a general yeah uh, of course he yeah. is of course he is yeah yep. yeah, yeah. yeah he's like wayne paul being head of the fucking fed i believe <laughs> he's in hawaii currently on my right. island unfortunately Good stuff Good um, stuff. yeah and like the, the army is bad and war is worse i mean like if I can't, I can't explain hot that how takes, bad all this shit takes, is. sir. Right. Yeah. Like fought in the legal <laughs> war. Is a Wouldn't recommend it. For this show. Yeah. <laughs> um, Please but, moderate your beliefs. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, uh, it wasn't good. Um, it took me a long time to come to grips with what exactly was happening to me. Yeah. Um, but now I'm in my mid 30s. I'm like, like I said, I got out in 2013. Mm hmm. And I would say only in the last three years would I consider myself like healthy. Yeah. How um, long did it take for like from exiting the military to really kind of like confronting that trauma, I suppose? Um. Oh, well, I, I, let me put it this way. The moment you left the military, you started confronting the trauma. How long until you did it in a more healthy way? I I think I started realizing it while I was still in, which is why I got out. Um, like, okay, got, okay. I can't. I came up at the end of my contract. I was really dealing with like I was at the the baby stages mm -hmm. of like, man, everything I've done is awful. <laughs> you know, um, <laughs> sure. You had an M are, are we the baddies moment. Is yeah, that I mean, I was, yeah. I was certainly having that in Afghanistan, of course, sure. um, which reflects a lot in, 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 in my book. Right. Um, and I'm then, sorry like, to say that I have not read it yet. I, I will read it. It is on my list for sure. Friendship canceled. I know. Um. <laughs> no, I know. No, 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 no. Look, I don't expect anybody to read my book, but yours I've heard is actually good. So I, I would argue read with that. Um, <laughs> but, you know, I, I was coming through a lot of the baby stages of that, of like going like the, the, the macro picture of like, wow, this is, um terrible like this war yeah. is awful um we shouldn't we shouldn't be doing all this because like remember this war started when i was in fucking middle school sure yeah, um i was there and too. i'm yeah and uh you know uh and then it like the how i was thinking about it got um the, the micro aspect of like my personal responsibility and stuff mm -hmm. like i'm very confident in saying that like you know i'm not a war criminal. However, there, <laughs> sure. there, there's a certain amount of personal responsibility that comes with being a volunteer in this war. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah on top sure. of, you know, things that come with it, survivor's guilt, um, untreated physical injuries, which mm -hmm. I have plenty of, right. um, getting blown up, getting shot at. These are all things that like the human, the human brain isn't meant to process these things, right? Like, Absolutely. At least not the human brain anymore. Like maybe when we were hitting each other with clubs yeah, and shit, we dealt with, with violence a I'm little go better. With, but let's like work backwards from then till now, and we'll just go with no, never. It's not been a good <laughs> idea. Look at where we are now. 
<laughs> right. And oftentimes, like talking about mental health, like people talk about like our generation, you know, because they like to blame millennials for everything mm-hmm. um, are just too soft for this yeah. kind of thing, which is just incredibly stupid yeah. um, and ahistorical. Uh, like Audie Murphy is famously touted as being uh, one of the greatest American soldiers of all time. But thankfully, he was killing Nazis, so we can actually be proud of him. Sure. Um, but he was also an alcoholic who beat his wife when he got home. Like, like this is something that people have always gone through. Yeah. Um, it's just something that nobody wants to confront because it's very easy, in my opinion, um, for society – American society, of course, and, you know, other people, other societies suck too, but um, to um, <laughs> throw the mentally ill in a dumpster somewhere sure. and saying, say they're an aberration. No, um, I mean, on our show, every time there is a shooting of some sort, it's just like, oh, this person's mentally ill. So we can write them right. off as not being a human being at all. Exactly. And yeah. you see that you see this in being parroted and taking advantage of um, how Americans see the mentally ill mm-hmm. and how they're this new, well, not new, but certainly amplified um, anti-trans bigoted uh, uh, dialogue that's happened on the right, where they frame trans people as being mentally ill. Right. Therefore they can be disregarded or, you know, it's something that needs to be cured. Sure. So, like, that's inherently genocidal. Um, Absolutely. No, and that's I how mean, they frame it. When you when you look at, uh, you know, this kind of anti-trans rhetoric, and then you look at the anti-trans rhetoric from the fucking Nazis, which should not be such an easy comparison, and yet it is. And then yeah. you look at their language towards anyone with mental mm-hmm. illness, especially, you know, when you go back to Nazis, and you can't help but think okay well sure once trans people are no longer their big boogeyman that's who's next there's almost like there's a poem about this there's always a next it shouldn't be that hard you know and it's like as someone who's literally studies this for a living um it's t it's the t4 program all over again right um yeah like People are labeled, I mean, granted, of course, we we do other things rather than check people into a hospital where they don't sure. leave. But, sure. like, they did that at first, too. And the, the, the thing is, there's, there's something called the Waller method of recognizing genocidal threats. Um, mm. And there is three stages. You because point that's how, at the Nazis. <laughs> pretty much. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's pretty much stage one. Uh, because a, It's a good start. It's it's the prevention stage where you yeah. point out what is happening um, yeah. and you challenge institutional and systemic uh, discrimination. And you hope by throwing it with a, uh, a big old light on top that they'll shrink away, which mm. even the Nazis fucking did. No. Like when, um, when German people found out about the T4 program, which was being carried out in secret, they had to fucking stop. Uh, which is why they did the Holocaust behind closed doors. Right. Um, like it made them stop and change their tactics, which then of course, you know, the fucking Holocaust happened. So yeah, this isn't no. a happy story. I mean, but what's like, exploited is that people are fundamentally not like evil. I think people are fundamentally good. The problem is people are also fundamentally lazy and yes. self-centered. And, you know, you do your best to see those traits within yourself but the moment you do, you start seeing them at writ large, you know? You start seeing people just go, well, you know, it's Georgia. It's not Illinois. Right. What am I doing caring about Georgia? Yeah. Um, and, you know, people, I, th- I mean, I don't think people are inherently good. I guess that's my, but I don't think they're inherently bad. I think people are inherently a blank slate. Mm. Um, and of course, the, how they're raised has a lot to do with that. The society they grow up in, societal norms, et cetera, et cetera. But there's a, there, there's, there's a big difference um, when it comes to what people are willing to do that um, 
is inherently detrimental to their way of life. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think that is one of the hitching points that we're running into. Um, Like things like, you know, what happened today, um, like four states immediate, uh, (laughs) the Supreme Court being the Supreme (laughs) Court. Um, You see like four states immediately banned abortion effectively. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that's a that's a minority of states. So a lot of people, especially people who are like us and live in safe uh, blue states or whatever, thinking that this isn't going to happen to them are like, ha ha, those idiots in Florida or whatever, you know, not to mention the fact that's fucking unspeakably cruel um, to. Yeah do that to the people who live there. They're not their governments. Like this was done by less than 20 people. Yep. You know? Um, And the fact that people are so willing to abandon populations they see as below them because of the really terribly shitty policies that their governments are doing doesn't fill me with optimism going forward because this is going to happen to the whole country at some point. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I mean... It's hard not to look at this as the beginning of the second civil war, regardless of whether or not it becomes a certain shooting war, more so as this is the end of the concept of the United States. It can no longer exist. There are six Supreme Court justices who are just fucking crazy, so we can't live like this anymore. Whether that happens now or later, or how long it takes, that's the end, you know? I think, I, I disagree, and not that I don't think that America as we know it is going to change. Um, I think it's just like we're just the death of what we consider a republic, for sure. 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 Um, but I, I mean, I think we've pretty solemnly shown that the people that should be standing up against this that actually have power are more than happy to roll over and take it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because well, I, mean, I mean, at the end of the Yoda day, did just fight uh, Mitch McConnell in the Capitol building and he threw all the circular things at Mitch McConnell, but Mitch McConnell, he's powerful in the dark side. So he threw him back and then he shot the lightning at him. And so Yoda had to leave. And now Mitch McConnell has complete control of the Senate. It's happened before in a galaxy a long, long time ago. (laughs) Oh, I'm I'm starting to wonder about Dan Crenshaw's midichlorian (laughs) count. Um, He's only got one eye. You can't trust him. You can't trust him. Got a force eye. Um, (laughs) That's if I've ever seen a Sith Lord. (laughs) I, 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 I truly think that, I mean... I, I think it's safe to say they were both significantly further left than the Democratic Party of the United States. Sure. But it's in all of their best interests that they continue doing what they're doing. Right. Um, because they get to keep their very high paid jobs doing literally nothing. Although I right. think they did sing, what, God Save America or something like that? It was beautiful. Brought a tear to my eye. Yeah. I know that. Thanks yeah. for that. It's like it's the meme of the guy just giving them a thumbs up, you know? Reminds me of a flyover at a baseball game. I always think, hmm, so safe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like I, I truly think that um, it, it'll continue being this way going forward. Um until the point they just say, like, you know, only landowners can vote. So they just get sure. get rid of all that bullshit like sure. they did before. It's unfortunate, um, to say the least, especially because, you know, I've been told about every two years, Jordan, that if I don't vote, fascism will win. And you know what? I voted. Yeah. Every fucking time. Uh, I'm leaving the country. <laughs> 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 That's one, yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know. It's it's never going to be like. Here's how it was always going to wind up. Sooner or later, we were going to remember that this is all pretend, and that just because you wear a black robe <laughs> doesn't mean anything you say makes sense. This is all pretend. Yeah, I'm. It I'm really starting. Is. I'm starting to think, Jordan, that. 
rep- a republic, since if you say a democracy, they're like, ah, we're not a democracy, ah, we're a republic. Ah, gotcha. I'm, I'm starting How to think about that the a, definition of words, sir. I'm, I have words. I have the best words. Um, <laughs> I'm starting to think a federal republic uh, being ruled effectively by a panel of unelected Ivy League ghouls that are all members of the Federalist Society. And if they're not, they're friends with the people who are is not the best way to govern a country. <laughs> right. I'm getting the hint. Right. Well, we're trapped in this one space that I think uh, has kind of collectively make us made us feel helpless in that the inertia of the moments that we're living through are so big that the only way for any individual to make an effect is to do a similarly big action, right? Yeah, that's a problem. That's a uh, big problem. And maybe also there was a very large protest movement about, you know, in 2020 um, that took to the streets, I believe, breaking most protest records in the United States. Yeah. So maybe the 2003 anti-war protests are bigger. I don't remember. I was a yeah. child. Um and nothing changed. In fact, mm-hmm. things only got worse. Um, so the government, um, and by extension, the Supreme Court, of course, since they caused this, uh, have taught people that peaceful protest does nothing. Yep. Um, it's hard not to learn that fucking lesson. Yeah, After it, it the seems like march? that's not a good God idea. Damn. Yeah. Ex- exactly, that too. <laughs> Worldwide protest did fuck all. Yeah, it is nothing. That's why, I mean, you know, there's a joke like if, if voting would let, actually change anything, they would make it illegal. Um, yeah. I mean, well, same goes yeah. for protests. Like, yeah, I'm not saying that I regret protesting in 2020. Of course I don't. Mm-hmm. I don't regret getting gassed by the cops or getting my ass kicked by Seattle PD. I mean, I wasn't a fan of getting my ass kicked by Seattle PD, but mm-hmm. okay, shit happens. But, like, it, it fundamentally, if anything was going to change a, a certain kind of trajectory that the country was going towards, it would have been that. Right. Um, and we couldn't even get budgets for cops cut. Right. Like, well, what are we going to do, man? Here's the thing. The problem is this. If a protest mo- movement organizes to the point where it can create good tactical situations for a protest, that's a war. Yeah, pretty much. You know, so if, say, let's say there was some sort of protest on Wilson and Broadway in Chicago, maybe there's a certain area where you could funnel the cops into an alley, push them into a situation where there are multiple people on either sides who can control the environment. And then, you know, like, if you were to share that information with people... (laughs) It would not go well. It wouldn't go well. However, anyways. It's a problem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it truly sucks. And I I hate being like a uh like a black pilled nihilist. Like because it makes it makes you feel even more powerless, right? Sure, sure. Um but at, at this point, like they haven't left anything else for anybody else. I mean, on on Monday, the EPA is gonna probably die. Yeah, you know, like yeah, yeah. The, the fundamentally the 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 case that they they will probably issue an opinion on a Monday is if the EPA is a legitimate legal regulatory body. Yeah, and like no, that's if something I stop to that, think it's for fucking... five seconds, I am scared. Like I I can't tell anybody this in my real life. Like, I'm scared that I will give everything up and go to Atlanta because I do think stopping Cop City is worth dying for. Like, it's it's that level of climate change threat. And I don't understand why I, you know, I'm not. Like, there's a, there's a certain part of me that is ashamed of that feeling. Does that, do you understand that? I think everybody, pro- I think it's quite human- for people to believe that they could always be doing more to stop um, an injustice, right? Mm-hmm. Like, I think that's a very human reaction. I um, mean, you literally fought a war, so there, <laughs> there <yeah>. is that. <laughs> 
I, I think it's a very, very, very human reaction um, to feel like you're never doing enough to stop something that you're ultimately powerless to stop. Um, but I, I think that's, you know, we're conditioned to think that way, right? Um, like it's in nobody's best interest in the government to galvanize the public. Yeah, because for sure. as the Republicans learned, you rapidly lose control of those people. Oh, right? it'll drive them crazy. Yeah, I mean, Dan Crenshaw's being assaulted in hallways for not being far right enough. Like, and, and I think, if anything, I mean, the Democrats are inherently worthless and dumb as shit, but, like, they're adverse to galvanizing a grassroots movement to do anything because they would rather have no, like, presidential power and be a minority in Senate and the House um, well, than... That's comfortable. Yeah. It's comfortable. It's so comfortable. We get to yell. We don't have to do anything. It's great. And it's great for them, too, because they can sit there, collect their paycheck, uh, and be like, we hear you. We see you. Please donate today. Oh, we're um, going to wear so <laughs> many culturally appropriate clothings. Oh, oh we're going to find more of them to wear. We're going to wear clogs yeah. to celebrate Swiss Day. That's how we're going to save the world. Like, it's telling that in the hours, I'm a little bit behind everybody out here, but, mm -hmm. like, in the hours, in, the, in, like, the immediate aftermath of Roe v. Wade dying, um, the Democrats on a fundraiser. Oh, that's the you only know? way to do it. Like, when uh, two months ago, maybe maybe it was more than two months ago, I don't, I, honestly, I don't fucking know. The Democratic Party threw their weight behind Henry Queller in Texas um, to be reelected when he is staunchly anti-choice and he was running against someone who was staunchly pro-choice. The mm -hmm. man is under FBI investigation for corruption and they supported him anyway. And he barely won. He won by like less than 300 votes. Yep. So I'm very safe saying, I feel very safe saying if they threw their weight behind the younger person because she was very she was much younger and not entrenched in power mm -hmm. she would have won yep. but they're much more comfortable circling the wagons and fucking dying than actually risking anything sure uh yeah and yeah like fuck, fuck that <laughs> i mean guy, there's really not much else too. to say that that just is the exact issue yeah and they're running beto o'rourke against greg abbott they're like <laughs> As lame as Beto is, it doesn't matter who the fuck you put against Greg Abbott. They're going to be eaten alive in Texas. But, it like, is. these are these are actual races they could win. And they're, like, whoever won that, whoever won the primary in the, in the uh, Henry Queller race was going to win the general. It's a safe spot. And instead of doing anything, it's, it's like Feinstein in California. <laughs> they would rather the literal fucking crypt keeper dot around and shit on themselves than, that, than replace them with anyone else. Sure. Well, listen, if you hold one person accountable, the whole system falls apart. Exactly. I mean, it's the same reason that, like, um, you know, notoriously fucking Nixon got a pardon, right? Like, that, that, that alone is... All the the political you class need. needs to protect itself from any consequences. Otherwise, they can't behave with the terrifying freedom that we give them. <laughs> right. That's just a regular. Listen, it makes sense. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there it, it's exactly like the you know the 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 Bourbon nobility of France, rather sure. like running off to Russia and destroying France no, than no, actually no, totally. like working within it. You know, like. They would rather everything collapse. All of whatever rights the the, the fucking constitution is this decide uh, is decided by this panel of fucking assholes sure, that we sure, actually sure, sure. have. Again, magical thinking. Yeah, I mean, well, let's let's back this shit all the way up to the 1700s when, which is what originalists want, right? Um, but they also have power, so they don't care. Yep, they're not going to be personally uh, hurt by any of this. You got it. They're filthy rich. They're even if they lose election, like re-election, which some of them certainly fucking will soon. Doesn't matter. Um, they're just gonna shuffle off into some like consultancy job in the DNC or some for think tank. Goldman Sachs or exactly. Whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They don't give a single fuck. 
It's the and class. the people who do, yeah, I mean, it's it's class warfare, except mm. they're also they're shadow boxing and losing. <laughs> I mean, that's that's saying to yourself that either they are in on it or they're incompetent. And yeah. I think there's a good combination of both uh, within politics, but the people with any power have to be in on it. Otherwise, they're the dumbest people on the planet. It can't, you right. can't be this stupid. You can't be this stupid. Susan Collins cannot possibly be that dumb. Oh, no fucking way. I it's don't buy that for a second. Impossible. It's physically impossible. Like, I would believe somebody had broken the speed of light faster than I would believe that Susan Collins is so naive as to believe that bullshit. Yeah. I mean, a good you know? example is, like, the, the January 6th commission coming out with, like, text messages and stuff that lawmakers are sending back and forth. Totally. Like, we we always believed that, at least I did, right? Um that they're like, ah, the Republicans are like master manipulators. They can't possibly believe this shit. Sure. They're simply leveraging this gaggle of weird QAnon people to leverage their power. But then you see their text messages and they're sending each other like weird YouTube videos for proof and shit. Sure. Like, oh, oh no, they, they're fully bought in. Like, no, I mean, they're not leveraging is, this shit. It is that like, be careful what you pretend to be. It yeah. is, be careful what mask you wear, you know, like it is, it is a little bit, I'm sure some of them walked into it thinking, okay, I'm going to co-opt it. We watched Alex on Infowars, like right. outright say, I'm going to try and co-opt the <laughs> QAnon movement. And I'm sure tons of them came in thinking, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to control this. And then because they're, you know, who they are. Yeah, I mean, look, again, look is. at Dan Crenshaw. That man literally made a Mission Impossible fanfic starring himself <laughs> parachuting in to save the election and then fast forward, what, a year? Yeah. And there's people cornering him and calling him a fucking rhino and a traitor <laughs> and shit. Like, some dudes, I mean, Crenshaw's a fucking ghoul. I hate him um, yeah. for the fact that he's a shitty fascist vet bro amongst other reasons and a navy seal which is inherently makes a one step below the fucking ss hey what are you gonna do but, um yeah he very very much is part of like he he's smart enough to harness the culture war because he's young enough to use twitter and social media and shit so like he was leveraging that garbage and now he's literally getting owned by people that would have absolutely voted for him in his district. Yeah, I know they came up on him on a side where he couldn't see, but like, still, they sh like it's fucking garbage. And but seeing people like him, who are out and out fascists, but not Chris Christian fascists, like they're not Christian nationalists. He's just a regular old fascist. Um, Almost yeah. refreshing to see. You like know? he believes in just nothing one of those other pure than state old power. Fascists. Yeah, um, and like, and he, him getting absolutely dominated by Marjorie Taylor Greene is mm -hmm. legitimately hilarious. It is. It's sad, but it is funny. <laughs> it is like, very sad. In the world where he is has like hecklers and Marjorie Taylor Greene of like Bobert and uh, who's the guy who's like the weird fascist dentist who's posts about Attack on Titan. Oh my god! Uh, I don't even know. I forget his fucking name now. But I like, try and avoid all of them because uh, they all might wind up on Infowars someday. That's the problem. I try, Mary Taylor Green did end up on Infowars. I try and still maintain a little bit of this. Like Jordan doesn't know what's going on in Alex and Infowars distance. So so many of these people, I try and avoid as much as possible because, frankly. Alex is going to be like, oh, this is the smartest person I've ever met. It's going to take two seconds. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm waiting for Dan to explain to me why they're awful. <laughs> uh, honestly, like as someone who's majoring in uh, uh, 
my my grad my grad degrees in Holocaust and, and genocide studies. Sure. Uh, do you remember? Fuck, it's probably like a year ago now. The Holocaust mm, didn't happen. Uh, <laughs> I've been told <laughs> by by many people on Twitter. Yes. Um, <laughs> But uh, when Marjorie Taylor Greene compared something to the Holocaust and then she had to go to a Holocaust museum totally. absolutely, and make a fucking lectern ass uh, uh, a speech outside the Holocaust museum being like, actually, the Holocaust is bad. And- um, the only thing I thought of immediately is like some poor motherfucker got through PhD just so they could walk Marjorie Taylor Greene to the Holocaust museum. Oh. Like, God damn, the world is oh grim. My God. Wow. <laughs> really? Just for her to be like, well, vaccines are kind of like the Warsaw Ghetto Uprising. Tell you whatever. what my bright spot is. <laughs> <sighs> well, listen, I will say that we are uh, we're coming to the close. So I want to uh, I want to ask you a quick question. Because I do think it's central to magic as a narrative device. And, and I mean, frankly, the way that it's applied today with the Supreme Court, magic as a magical thinking device. So in what way do you kind of engage with the world with magical thinking? Like whether it may be, uh, you know... Um, Jamie Loftus has the new show, The Ghost Church. Like the way a lot of people engage with death is spiritualism. That that belief that they can talk to somebody who is dead, or religion, or crystals, or or however it is. I've found so many people who engage with at least some form of magical thinking that I'm interested to see if you have any one of those. Um I don't think I do. Uh, I, I'm not religious. I'm okay. not, I'm not spiritual. Um, okay. uh, I guess <laughs> the closest to be is like, like I was you def- don't have to engage with it. Like I'm stoked. I would be stoked if you were like, Nope, I don't believe in anything beyond the level of physics that we understand. The standard model is all I believe in. Like I'd be fine with that. Um, I, I think the closest that would be like magical thinking or whatever is the fact that like I'm fine not knowing things. I don't know if that counts. Like yeah, I'm not a fucking physicist. I'm not a climate sure. scientist. Uh, I'm a historian and my field is okay. quite small. If you're at um, a party, if you're at a party, if somebody is like, okay, it's time for me to tell you my ghost story. Are you going to get mm. in their face and be like, ghosts are not real? No, absolutely not. I think those so stories are super fun. So do you believe that ghosts are real? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, like, I've heard so many people's ghost stories or like weird, like, you know, those, those stories where like hair sticks up on the back of their neck or whatever. Sure, I've sure. never had that. <laughs> But I think they're super fucking interesting. <laughs> it's the same well, reason why like cryptids and conspiracy theories sure. used to be fun well, until course. they got ruined, right? Absolutely. Let me. Th- I do think ghost theories are or ghost stories are one of the few like haven't been infiltrated by anti semites yet. Like, oh, you, you just like, wait. Ghosts, ghosts are part of the Zionist about- conspiracy. Oh, God damn it. <laughs> What's your favorite ghost story? Before we go, what's your favorite ghost story that you've heard? Oh, man. Uh, so growing up, like everybody else, there was like regional ghost stories or whatever. Uh-huh. Um, and the so the first place I was ever stationed was in Kentucky. And there was an old closed down sanitarium there. Oh, that's the best place for ghost stories. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and uh, the name escapes me. I'm sure someone will immediately correct me on it, but, um, and it was closed down. It was like fencing around it. Um, and you could not enter. You'd definitely get a ticket if you got caught. So we have, <laughs> so of course, like everybody, well, you gotta under, go in. You gotta yeah, everybody go in. on their weekend is breaking in. into this place. Like you, <laughs> yeah, you taught absolutely. a whole bunch of soldiers how to low crawl through the woods, and you think we're not going to use it to get around cops? <laughs> sure. Um, and you know they all broke in and would tell me like, oh man, you can, you can hear things. Um, and like 
there's been ghost uh, shows that have gone there. Um, it is all super interesting to me. And of course, there's the timeless thing. There's one of the suburbs outside of Detroit that had a very particular railroad track um, that if you're if you stopped on one side of it, um, you'd be pushed across. Oh, right? yes. I love That's like the trains. story that every fucking town has. It's like for some reason, trains. for some reason, every hometown, I swear to God, has had a school bus full of kids get annihilated by a train. Why do you um, think that they stop and open the door to listen to <laughs> if there wasn't a ghost story in every town, they wouldn't do it. You didn't, I mean, many people don't know this, but every bus driver actually has to go through an extensive demonology course before they get their license. (laughs) So they can't. They're all all Catholic uh, priests. They all have to be (laughs) ordained as appropriate. (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. I have studied for 30 years at the Holy (laughs) See to drive this bus. Hey, kids. So, anyways, I'm a Catholic priest. We're going to get you to the fucking school today. Why do you smell like whiskey and cigarettes? I thought I told you as a Catholic priest. Because I got. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, thank you so much for coming out. I won't keep you any longer. Everybody has really enjoyed it. Again, inexplicably, uh, watching an episode of The Magicians with me. Uh, Joe... Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And I hope everybody had a great time. I hope you had a great time. Yeah, it was great. Thanks for having me. Convincing. Uh, (laughs) Ladies and gentlemen, have a wonderful evening and take care.